My name is Paulina Larina. I'm a rising sophomore in communications and German major from Tashkent, Uzbekistan. And you will hear the presentation Devour the Local Flavor, 36 hours in Berea for a lock of war. First of all, I have to warn you that I use the term lock of war very loosely here. In this particular presentation, let's imagine that a lock of war is the person who doesn't simply have passion for local foods. Instead, this person has a passion for all things that compromise a certain city. He wants to get the essence of the place and experience all the biggest local attractions. But before I tell you more about who a locavore is, first, let's define the relevance of this presentation. Appalachia is the land of raging conflict. Unique natural beauty and rich resources of the land are in stark contrast to the poverty of distressed counties, income distribution inequalities, and lack of employment. We're all aware of the reasons for that state. Extracting coal economy, absentee land ownership, short-lived low-wage plant relocation, to name a few that Handbook in Appalachia identifies. Ron Eller, the prominent Appalachian scholar and the author of the book Uneven Ground, also contributes the damage inflicted to the Appalachia to the adherence of the local leaders to the mainstream idea of development and consequent spread of chain stores that tempered smaller local businesses and community-based solutions. Later in his book, Ron Eller also expresses the view that tourism is the key industry that can possibly be a healthier short-term alternative. Tourism will provide a shift away from the mainstream ideas of economic growth that didn't have a significant positive effect on resolving the issues of the region, and back to region-based solutions. This will not only provide a relieving influx of wealth into the region, but also contribute to the sense of pride in the community. One of the Kentuckian leaders, the mayor of Hazard in 2000s, Bill Gorman, said once, if you give people hope, they will conquer the world. A positive attitude can be a first step to creating an atmosphere where young people and beginner entrepreneurs can flourish in future. So the pride that tourism generates in the community can have a much longer lasting effect to help rejuvenate it. So this presentation will offer a tourist route for one of the possible personas that can be found in Kentucky I'd like you to meet Michael Davis, who is traveling to Berea. Michael Davis. He is in his 40s. He is married to Anna Davis, who travels with him. He also drives places like 84% of other Kentucky visitors. And he widely uses internet for preliminary planning and relies on his smartphone for driving directions and for deciding on locations on the spot. His lifestyle. Michael is a workaholic. Due to his work in office setting, he leads a sedentary lifestyle. So collecting local flavors and acquiring aesthetical as well as direct and engaging activities experience is his way of countering it. He only takes short vacations, so he's in Berea for a leisure trip, like 60% of other Kentucky travelers. He also travels without children, like 40% of other Kentucky visitors. He still feels young and is fine with noisy, energetic places. He's also quite tech-savvy, and he owns and uses a smartphone for directions. His desires. He desires a deep immersion into what the city has to offer to get as much of local flavor as possible. He also wants a simple change of scenery, and he wants a variety of experiences. And he also wants to devote time to, for his, to his wife to counter the sense of guilt for spending too much time at work. His limitations. He gets easily bored. He needs a variety of active and passive experiences. And he, he can't leave his spouse's side. And she gets tired of noisy places and extensive walking. His travel goals. His first goal is to create long-lasting memories. He wants to take in the views to enrich his experience but he also tries to balance his spouse's desire for passive observation with his desire for active participation. He wants to feel adventurous during his trip and have a variety of experiences, visual, audio, and kinesthetic. His travel strategy is to plan ahead for lodging because he wants to feel safe and relaxed at night. And so he will probably run a Google search. His previous experience with social media is quite extensive. He is tech savvy, so due to his familiarity with computer at work. Um, both Mike and his wife have a Facebook account. 
and Anna has heard of TripAdvisor from her older friends who travel a lot, and Mike stumbled across Yelp during his previous business trips. For lodging, he and his spouse are equally inclined to stay at a historic hotel, like for instance Boone Tavern on the right, like 50% of other travelers in Kentucky, or to follow 4% of Kentucky visitors and rent a cottage that offers more privacy and comfort to have some quality time together, like for example Weaver's Rest Cottage or Patrick Cottage or John J. Fee Cottage in Berea. So let us now proceed to an actual itinerary of what Mike will do in Berea for 36 hours. He arrives in Berea on Friday at 4 p.m. and decides to take a stroll through Berea Historic Old Town to stretch his stiff muscles after the drive. He and his wife find a place that is home to neat little shops, galleries, and artist studios. Mike and Anna visit the top drawer gallery, where Mike sees artists and craftsmen at work and enjoys welcoming smiles and pleasant dialogues with the owners. And they also stop by Old Town Fetch Factory and meet Mary, the owner of the shop, and treat themselves to some deliciously fresh fudge or rice krispies that only pick up their appetite. So at 6 p.m., walking down the Broadway street, they notice Black Feather, a somewhat secluded and not so wide known place in Berea that places emphasis on local foods and supporting sustainable agriculture. Mike and Anna find their relaxing instrumental music, along with the homey atmosphere, to be a perfect setting for a break after a long drive to Berea. Anna enjoys a cup of organic, fairly traded tea, while her husband drinks rich, aromatic coffee, while both start to understand why this place is so feverishly adored by its frequents. At 7.30, the couple heads over to Club Arena Skating Rink. Two minutes of walking and one sacred call by Michael or to George Wyatt, the owner of Club Arena, and the couple immerses themselves in the joyful and energetic atmosphere of skating in the company of people of all ages, starting from middle school, including some college students and even senior citizens. They enjoy an array of latest pop songs infusing the skating area with energy, as well as slow melodies for couple skating. At one point, the DJ plays their song. And the purpose of the mystery call that Michael made is clear now. At 9 p.m., the couple heads over to Papalinos. After a long walk, a day of skating, and and new impressions, a good Italian restaurant is what they have planned next. The Papalinos is more than just a restaurant; it's the soul of Berea, according to Mitchell Toll, local artist. No other place has such a cross section of this city. Craftspeople, students, faculty, business people, tourists. Mike and Anna can spend hours just people watching. They get a crusty fresh pizza and soft drinks as their first evening in Berea is coming to an end. It's Saturday at 9 a.m. After a good night's sleep, our couple immerses themselves into a bursting atmosphere of BCNT, a cafe near college campus. They are surrounded by lively dialogues of friends, as well as people frantically cramming for their first class. Mike and Anna treat themselves to Stephanie Clark's cinnamon roll and a cherry pie with a cup of rich coffee and tea respectively. There's something nostalgic in being surrounded by the students, and they are both reminded of their time in college. At 10.30, it's time for the biggest hiking attraction of Berea. The Pinnacles, located just 7 minutes away by car from BCNT. A 6.6 .6 mile loop of moderate steepness carries Mike and his wife through the series of wonderful sights with great outlooks. After consulting the map, Mike got online, he decides to concentrate on East Pinnacle, Indian Fort Lookout and West Pinnacle to get cut down on time and only visit the three locations that offer the grandest view of the countryside below. At 1 p.m. the couple heads over to Main Street Cafe to take a break from unhealthy food because they are attracted by the modest motto, probably the best salad in town. They find a fairly impressive selection of all kinds of food, especially among their trademark burgers. Anna is also pleased by one of the most extensive vegetarian menus in the county, color-coded green on the menu. The atmosphere is rustic and authentic, break or warm yellow walls with interesting decorative mirrors, 
paintings of small statues decorating them, wooden floors and a fish tank. It's a cozy place with an excellent service for a nice lunch meal. At 2.30, the couple walks out of Main Street Cafe and decides to walk through the college square shops and dive into local arts and crafts. They stop and chat with the students working in many of those shops and cognizing the traditional Appalachian crafts like broom crafting or quilting or more conventional jewelry making. Mike might be so compelled by those dialogues that he decides to get a pair of handcrafted silver earrings for Anna. At 3.30, compelled um, by a worried local that was saying that Mitchell Toll is intending to devote himself to art and close his gallery in the near future, our couple heads over to Mitchell Toll Gallery. This place hosts a wonderful collection of watercolor and pencil drawings in three big categories children portraits, landscapes, and wildlife. Reminded of their own children, the couple walk through the gallery, and maybe they're even compelled by Mitchell Toll the, himself to get one of his prints or paintings. At 5 p.m., the couple stops by Mario's Pizza, diagonal across the street from the Toll Gallery, and they get some terribly unhealthy but terrifically delicious pizza or burgers to have enough fuel for upcoming evening activities. Because at 7 p.m. the couple heads over to Action Folk Center for an afternoon of contra dance. No one can leave Berea without experiencing the friendly atmosphere of contra dancing to live music. And begin your session before the dance, help Mike straighten out his second left foot, and Anna is beyond happy. At 9 p.m., the couple is at dinner bell and they relax and absorb the air of comfort and enjoy a freshly baked dessert like a fresh blueberry cobbler to mark an end of their 36 hours in the city of Berea. The couple heads home right now, but how do we measure the impact? Since they are relatively young and technologically savvy, they are likely to contribute to the electronic word of mouth through posting their reviews or even simple check-ins on social media websites Yelp, TripAdvisor, Google Local and Facebook. Photographs that a couple are very likely to take to capture the memories of their time spent together they will probably show to the parents and create a certain word of mouth in their close network and they will probably also post them on Facebook and that will generate a much greater impact and reach a much larger number of people. Mike and Anna are also likely to share the details of their trips with their colleagues, in Michael's case, or friends, in Anna's case, since it was a trip when her husband completely devoted himself to her and took her places she didn't expect, like the skating rink. She might even write a blog post about that. So what are the future steps for Berea? To increase the prominence of Berea in the social media, small business owner could be encouraged and trade in the area. To, in strategies to ask their customers for online reviews, the ways to address negative reviews, or thank people for positive reviews to establish long-lasting relationships. A centralized network to advertise the different routes in Berea, not just the arts and crafts route, would significantly increase the likelihood of a more diverse population of tourists. KentuckyTourism.com is used by 30% of the region visitors. However, it is not as personal as the traveler's social media website, where people can post their personal reviews. 92% of people are reported to trust a recommendation from a family member or a friend. 50% of people trust the conventional paid ads, but 70% of people will trust a review posted on social media. So, more integrated online advertisement will also help people orient in the smaller towns in Kentucky. I would appreciate any comments or questions that you can post below this video and thank you for listening. That was Palina Larina with a presentation, Devour the Local Flavor.